We're going to open up with a word of prayer. So let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you for this day. Uh, once again, Father, we recognize that it is a gift from you. And so we just ask for your help in stewarding this day and making the most of it uh, in a way that will just bring you glory and honor. We ask you to be with our time in this devotional, that you would just uh, speak to our hearts and uh, enrich our lives. We love you and thank you for it in your strong name. Amen. All right, so we are in our fourth uh, lesson of this CEU on um, in need, being in need of direction or finding direction in life. And uh, today we're going to be talking about direction in tough times. So let's start by reading uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, our theme verse. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit, or, uh, submit to Him or acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. So for all of us, uh, we are we are sort of in the midst of this CU under the premise that God really does want to make our path straight. God really does want to give us direction in life. Um, and so today uh, we're going to be talking about God's direction in times of, of trials. Uh, so James 1 uh, verses 2 through 8 is... is um, going to be the verse we camp out in uh, this morning that I think gives us a lot of good advice on this subject. Uh, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. And I'm going to read verses 2 through 8. I think you only have verse 2 there, uh, but then we'll cover the verses again as we go through the points. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord for such a person is double minded and unstable in all they do. I don't think there is anything that makes us feel more like we are going in the wrong direction in life than a good old fashioned trial. Um, a time that really tests our faith, a season of life that uh, just seems like we are being hit from every uh, side. Uh, I think human nature is sort of, sort of for us to equate uh, that being on the right path, going in the right direction, means things are going good for us in life. Uh, but the Bible, the Bible is pretty clear that that is not always the case, right? Sometimes you can be going in the right direction and incur some of uh, some some bad times. I mean, we think of Job, for instance, right? Job was on the right path, doing what is right, and uh, going in the it would seem the right direction, and yet he encountered some pretty uh, pretty tough trials in in his life. And so, we are not to assume because we are facing a trial that that we are going in the wrong direction however they do create in us um, this this crisis of faith at times and uh, we we often question the direction we are heading when we are faced with trials this weekend I faced uh, a pretty severe trial um, I was received a message on whatsapp and uh, and uh, it was from a uh, running group that I'm a part of, headed up by Patrick. Um, I say Bentima, you say Baitima. Let's call the whole thing off, right? <laughs> uh, uh, the pizza guy, right? And uh, great, great friend. I respond uh, to his to his message, a group message. All right, a group message with maybe ten or twelve other people in it. And I get an immediate response back from Patrick that says, thanks, Jason. By the way, what is with all of the kissy faces in your message? That's a crisis, brother. 
And I'm, I'm a little bewildered and I'm thinking, he's probably not talking to me, that's to someone else. I scroll through the messages, I don't see any kissy faces or, or hard eyes in the, in the uh, uh, message here. And uh, he says, I, I, so I private messaged him outside the group and I was like, hey, was that to me? I'm a little confused uh, why you thought I was sending you kissy faces. <laughs> Uh, and, and he said, yeah, I'll send you a picture. And so he sent me a picture and sure enough, um, there's my name that pops up and there's all these kissy faces and hard eye emojis. <laughs> and I'm like, Patrick, did this, is this the first time you received this? And he said, no, every time you send a message, I get this. <laughs> of a sudden I'm mortified I'm, I'm mortified and I'm just thinking I, I just uh, one of our cross-country runners uh, I had just whatsapped his mom about about Isaac <laughs> and I'm mortified thinking I just sent this lady kissy faces <laughs> this is this is a trip to mr. Thomas's office on Monday for sure right and so I'm like, Patrick, two questions for you. Uh, um, if this indeed has always come, why are you just telling me now, bro? What? <laughs> and is everyone else seeing this? And he's like, yes, I'm pretty confident they are. <laughs> I am, I'm truly, <laughs> I know this doesn't say you're laughing, but this is a trial, friends. This is, this is, <laughs> I'm mortified. And so we start doing research and, um, and come to find out, uh, maybe a year ago, uh, Patrick was was at church and I wasn't, um, and he asked Tyra for my contact information. And in Tyra's phone, she happens to have my name with some kissy faces and heart fa heart eyed emojis by it, and she shared my contact with Patrick. <laughs> who got the kissy faces and hard eye emojis. Uh, yeah, but then, but then the question occurred to me, well, Tyra, um, who else have you shared my contact information with? <laughs> Carl and Kristen Nielsen. <laughs> Completely mortified, all right? So this, this was definitely a week end of, of trials for me. And I haven't, I haven't had the courage to face Carl or Kristen about this uh, to find out if they've been getting kissy faces from me or, or not. Um, James gives us some good advice, uh, segueing now into the Bible from that. I don't know how we get there. Um, but but uh, listen, all of us encounter trials, and, and the truth is we're talking about serious trials that go beyond emojis that you might get on your phone or might be sent on your behalf from a phone, right? Uh, we know what a trial is. We've been there. We've all felt it. We've encountered it. It's hard. It's a tough season of life. It's when unexpected things happen that take us by surprise. They take our breath away. They're hard times. What do we do in those moments? Uh, uh, well, I think there, James gives us some insight of four things that I read in this, in this passage of Scripture that I believe we need in order to find our way or to find God's direction in the midst of, of trials. And, and just let me say, uh, just like with anything, these aren't easy. I mean, they're, they're really easy to stand up here and talk about. They're really easy and they sound quite poetic and beautiful when, when, when James is writing them and they're definitely beautiful to read and, and they're, re they're, they're really easy to say when you're talking to someone else who's going through a trial. But when you're in the midst of it, they're some of the hardest things to do. Uh, and so that's why we have to get God's word in our heart and we have to know where we stand before trials happen. Because if you wait till you're in the midst of the trial to try to develop and cultivate these in your life, it's going to be hard. So the first thing uh, we need, James says, in the midst of the trial is joy. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Now, we have to understand here that James uh, was, was writing to Christians who were suffering for their faith. 
Uh, I mean, they were suffering for their faith. They were undergoing severe persecution. They were being killed. They were being thrown in prison. And James looks at them and says, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Now, note that he didn't say be happy about what you're going through. Because happiness is altogether different than joy, right? We can have an inner joy even when there's not a smile on our face about our circumstance. How can we have joy when things are so bad? It's because even when things are at their worst, we still have this amazing God who promised us, even when life feels its loneliness, our loneliest, we are not alone. Even when life feels tough, even when it feels so hard, we have a God who is stronger and bigger than any of it, and He promised to stand there with us. Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear. We can be equipped with joy. Why? Because He, He is with us. Now, two important things to remember if we're going to have joy in the midst of the trial, and it's important to know these before you ever encounter a trial. Number one, uh, trials are inevitable. Trials are inevitable. And in fact, if you signed up for Christianity because you thought you were getting this, uh, this life of prosperity that was exempt for any, from any problems, uh, then someone sold you a cheap bill of goods. All right, because Jesus, sort of the head of, of this body of faith, right? He made us the exact opposite promise. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. Like, he didn't say you might have trouble. He didn't say you're going to have trouble if you make some wrong decisions. He said, no, in this world, count on it, take it to the bank. You are going to have trouble. Trials for all of us are inevitable. So whenever we have a trial, we don't have to look up to God and say, God, how could you do this to me? Because God has already promised us that it's going to happen. But He also promised us He's not going to leave us, right? So trials are inevitable, but, but here's the important thing. If we're going to keep a joy in the midst of trials, is trials always have purpose, because the testing of your faith, James says, develops perseverance. And perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking in anything. Now, there are many trials that, that people will encounter that we will never understand. Like most of us will read the book of Job and we accept it for what it is, right? And we see that God is good even in the midst of this trials. But the, but the reality for most of us, and, and I say me, maybe not for you, when I read Job, there's still things about it that I don't understand, right? There's, there's things about it even that, that just sort of bother me on some level and I just have to give over to God knowing that he is good and and even though I don't understand it I know I know the point that God is 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 showing us through through Job's life there are some trials that we will never understand like but but if I was to ask every single one of you what time or season in your life is most accredited to you growing in your faith? It probably wouldn't be a time when your bank account was full. It probably wouldn't be a time when everything was smooth. It would most likely be a time when things got really rough in your life and in some way or another, you just saw God undergird you in that moment. You saw him show up in some comforting way, some miraculous way, and, and you knew that it was the hand of God that it was at work in the midst of this trial. And it developed a faith and a confidence in you that knew that no matter what you went through, God was there for you. And so the testing of your faith had a purpose to it and it made you stronger, right? As that great theologian, Kelly Clarkson maybe said, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Um, uh, listen, when we go through something, it's not meant to take us out. But with God, I believe it always can make us stronger, right? So the testing of our faith, it, it, it always has a purpose. 
Uh, so, so first, um, to find direction in the midst of, of a trial, um, we need joy. Secondly, we need to have a proper understanding of our situation. Um, I think you're filling the blanks. I've got it as understand your situation. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Um, in this verse, James, uh, he gives us some advice on how to rise above, um, how to rise above our, our troubles and our trials. Um, he tells us, don't, don't continually moan about it. Don't get depressed about it. Uh, but have this trust in God and understand that what you're going through, what you're going through might be taking you by surprise right now and it might be shaking up your life. But understand this, it hasn't taken God by surprise and God hasn't deserted you in this moment. Understand that, that you are perhaps living out that famous poem of footprints, right? You might not understand anything that's going on or nothing around you seems to make sense, but you need to understand that in this hardest time, God is there with you. Perhaps you don't even see Him because He's carrying you in His arms. Uh, there were some children in middle school, which probably all of you can relate who were uh, uh, coming into the lunch line at the school they attended. And uh, a cafeteria worker just got uh, really upset because they kept just grabbing too much food. Um, and, and so she would have snacks out and they would just grab so much of it. So finally, there were, there were two stacks of snacks that day. Uh, and beside the apples, there was a sign that said, only take one, God is watching. Right? Only take one, God is watching. But one of the students cleverly put a sign beside the uh, chocolate chip cookies that said, take as many as you want, God is guarding the apples. <laughs> here, here, here's the reality for all of our lives. We can rest assured that though our lives sometimes are overwhelmed by one set of circumstance, God can handle everything that's going on in our life at once. And not only our life, but our brothers and sisters around us. Uh, God, God is in control and He is bigger than our circumstances. And we have to understand that when it feels like we're going through something that's going to take out our faith, uh, God will use it to build and strengthen our faith. Um, I, I think of, of Job again. I don't understand uh, everything that happened to Job. Uh, Job one still sort of wrecks my mind at times when I when I read it. It's hard for me to fully understand and to grasp. Um, but what we do know, if we read Job from beginning to end, is that God was. At, at work and and that the testing of, of Job's faith uh, truly truly refined his faith as as gold and because he he uh, made it through and kept trusting the Lord in the midst of his trials God brought him out and God brought him out stronger so we need a proper understanding when we are going through trials we're gonna just pause there we'll pick up um, next week because uh, I don't think I can get through these last two but I promise you I will do better at time management next week all right and we we will get through the rest of this in the next lesson. So let me pray over you. God, we love you and uh, we thank you so much for your goodness in our life. And uh, I just ask you right now, Lord, for anyone who might be in the midst of a trial, they're struggling, they feel like they're being taken out, they feel like they're being ran over, they hide it from everyone else. But inside, they lay their head on their pillow at night and they cry themselves to sleep because their faith is being tested. They're in the trial of their life. God, I pray that you would undergird them in this hour. I pray you would undergird them in this time of need. And though the situations in their life might never bring them happiness or these current circumstances might never bring them happiness, God, may they count it joy that you are with them in the midst of this storm.
and may they feel you ever close and may they understand that you are doing something in their life in spite of this trial and even using this trial perhaps Lord uh, to strengthen their faith and their trust in you so God I pray I pray for those who are in the midst of that trial right now, that you would help them in their time of need. We love you and we thank you for it in your strong name. Amen. Have a great day, guys.